Chapter 2, Variables in PowerShell. All right, so imagine a variable as a container that you store something in, right? A box, right? Something you put something in that you can retrieve later, okay? So PowerShell supports all types of variables. Types or formats are like text, integers, decimals, right? Because in order to use that data, we want it to be a certain type so we know how to use it in something else. So if, it, if, a, if a text is in the string or variables in a string and or text and we need to use it for, you know, a date, then we need to properly convert it to that format so that it would work properly, okay? So a simple variable is going to be called with a dollar sign and typing in whatever. So foo equals bar. We've stored it there. And if you want to run something, push B to go enter a cell below. And now we call foo. Okay, simple as that. You can do one, right? And if you call upon it, it's one. If you do get type to know what kind of type of variable it is, this is how you do it. The type is an integer, okay? Now, arrays. So now we're gonna get a little bit more a little bit more complicated. You kind of heard about arrays before when we were talking about the PowerShell objects when we had multiple properties in an object. Arrays kind of the same thing. Multiple properties or multiple items or in a list, okay? Imagine an array as a list, okay? So it doesn't have two parameters because remember the PowerShell object was something like I, a name, and then you have the name of the person, and then age, and then the age of the person. This is just a list of um, values, okay? So in this example, we do my array of ints equals one, two, three, four, all right? I press B to enter cell below, and I do it again of ints, and look, I've got one, two, three, four items. If you do dot count, it counts how many items are in the array, okay? Just real quick. I know it's not in this particular lesson, but good to know, right? So now that we know that and we um, follow the next step, it says enter the following and call your variables to see the results. So we're going to do a different thing. So. On the top one, right above it, when we did that, remember we did get type? Let's look at the type. It's an object, it's a system array, okay? Now, let me actually get one of those values. So I'm gonna do an open bracket, and I'm gonna call that the first item in the list, which starts at zero. Don't ask me why it starts at zero, but it starts at zero. And when we do that, we get one. Then we want to do get type again. And it comes out as an integer, right? The reason I'm saying that is because we didn't put quotes. Do you see the example right here? There's quotes. What do you think is going to be the type of these? Do you think they're going to be integers? Do you think that these quotes don't make a difference? Or do you think those quotes do make a difference? Let's see. We do the same thing. My array of strings equals one, two, three, four. Okay. We do that. I press B to enter a cell below that cell. And I do my array of strings. Hold shift, press enter, and I get the results. It looks the same, right? It literally looks the same as the other as the other time. But we're gonna do it, we're gonna open the bracket 
and we're going to specify one, two, or three, whatever you want. Play around, right? But we're just, this is like the index number, sort of the location of it, kind of like an address, right? Get type. It's a string. When you put quotes, it's a string. Do you think you can add this? Do you think you can add this? No, because it's not an integer. When you do, when you add these two together, let me just show you real quick. Plus my array of strings. Something like that, I think. Three, two. Three, two. That does not seem right. It needs to add it together. But if you follow this method, right, which is the string, and we do this, I'm going to copy and paste the same thing, or actually I'll just run it in here. Hold shift, press enter. Oh, it didn't work. What did I do wrong? Let's do this. Get type. Do this. And. Hmm. Three plus two. Oh, I thought it was, no, no, it's my array of strings. You see that? I have two different variables. I'm sorry, guys. Array of ints. And I'm going to call the first one item, I'm going to add it to my array of ints to the second item. Okay. See? Three. If I did it with the same, is it what, two and one? We'll add two and one over here. See? All right. It's very important to know that, okay, that this is not the same as this. So let's add to the array. Adding to the array is um, something you also have to keep mindful of, right? You're gonna wanna add items to a list, okay? So let's copy this. My array of ints, we see that. B to go to below, my array of ints, hold shift, press enter. I've got a list of five integers, right? Because I added five to it. Play around. Add a 10. Add 11. Let's output, right? Again, I'm doing shift enter to output and uh, yeah, just play around. Go crazy, right? This is your playground. All right. Combining arrays together. So here's, now we're going to combine two arrays together. You kind of saw the example we just did it, right? But we're now combining two sets of arrays together. The first array and the second array. All right. So we're going to do first array equals one, two, three, four. We do second array equals five, six, seven, eight. And you could add nine, 10, whatever you want, right? Now we combine them. We add the first array with the second array. So again, this one and this one is gonna combine and they both will go into the same list, okay? So we run that. I'm going to press B to enter a cell uh, below the cell I have selected. Combined array, hold shift, press enter, and you see I have a list. What do you think if I do this? What do you think will happen if I do this? Do you think it'll uh, do it twice? You're going to see one through 10 twice. Let's see. 
I'm going to push A to go above, so I don't actually have to go up and then press B. I can actually push A to go above the cell. Combined array. Yes, you're right. 20 items now. Dot count. You got 20 items. Okay. And I always like to reinforce, you know, kind of past tutorial. So remember we did the for loop? Let's do the for loop real quick. We're going to do percent, and then we're going to do the pipe. And then we're going to do something like write host that array item. It looks like the same thing, right? Remember, what am I doing again? I'm taking the pipe, and then I'm taking that pipe, which is that list. I'm doing it in a for loop. And then for each item, we're going to do an automatic variable. And now I'm just spitting it out. So now that you know I'm for each item I can do something with it, check this out. We take that item and we add five to it. Ah, you take that item, you could do write host. I am number comma. You could do this. You could do I am number this. Right? Or you can actually do I am number um, this. Same thing. Same thing. Okay? Do you get it? Does that make sense? If it was a string, it wouldn't be adding it. But because they're actual integers, I can actually do some math with it. All right.